Hey everyone, welcome back to Cartel Files. My name is Adrian and my job is to simplify laser design for you so you can start building your next project quicker. In today's episode we're going to have a look at a design that I put together and specifically on how we can nest each and every one of these components into a piece of material ready for mass production. So before we jump into the video please give this a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel it really helps us grow and keep bringing new and free content to you every week okay let's get into it so as i said these um this design is quite complex and i'll give you a quick rundown on exactly how it's put together uh, just for a bit of context so um, as you can see there's a pin that goes um, from the top star all the way down into the base piece here and then we've got these sort of flakes i'm calling it you can call it branches whatever uh, these branches or flakes uh, have a hole in them so that they can pass over that pin and then there's these spaces in between which space out each of the branches or each of the rows okay and you can have it in a sort of a symmetrical way or a staggered way just by rotating um, those branches okay so this is my design i really like it how do i now go and mass produce this part so the first thing you need to do is if you've designed this in a 3d software package like fusion 360 which is what i've used to design this uh, you then need to export it somehow and the easiest way is if you create a sketch of each of your components. So you can see on the left hand side, I have each component broken out as its own separate sketch. Okay. And then what you can do is you can right hand click on that and go down to save as DXF. So that option DXF is a pretty much a universal file format. Um, which will allow you to export out of a 3D software and then import into a 2D software like Corel Draw or Photoshop uh, or Illustrator, something like that, uh, which you can then do the further processing steps on. So um, what I've done is I've actually created a script uh, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below, but you can select all of your different sketches as you can imagine, right hand clicking, then pressing save as DXF and then typing out the name um, can get quite, you know, um, cumbersome and repetitive uh, if you've got a lot of components. So I've made a bit of a script um, and you can install it under here under add-ons, scripts and add-ons. And you can see my script is called export all sketches. So once you click that, you press run, you choose a folder that you want to export all the um, DXF files into, hit select folder and it will output all of those DXF files ready to import into Corel or Illustrator or wherever else you're going to use it. All right, so now let's head over to Corel Draw and have a look at each of the components individually. So as you can see, the bottom layer has the biggest, um, the biggest branches and then they subsequently get smaller and smaller as they get to the top. Here is the base piece um, and the pin that goes through it. And then you've got all of these different spaces. Uh, you can see I've sort of put them um, all around to sort of use the material up as much as I could. So most people would just run their machine with this as the design file. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you are mass producing these parts, let's say you need to make a hundred of them or a thousand of them, all this wasted space costs you money. Okay. And basically it just creates a larger cost base um, for your product, meaning your product costs you more money to produce, uh, which means obviously the end result to the customer is a more expensive product. So the better you can utilize your material, the lower you can make the, the lower cost you can make these products for, and therefore, you know, have a lower selling cost for your product. Um, or 
potentially have a larger profit if you sell um, these already um, at a set price and you want to try and increase your profits or your margins, uh, definitely try and save some cost on material. So most people would be designing something like this, just randomly dropping things uh, on the page and just making sure nothing overlaps and they hit go. Now, if you took this one step further and you spend a bit of time, so this took me probably five minutes at the most, uh, you can manually optimize the design to use less material. So you can see now we've got all this white space over here, um, which we could put more parts um, on, or we could put you know different designs on here and really utilize the material as much as possible. So here you can see there's a lot of white space, okay? And then in the optimized version, uh, there's not a lot of white space between each of the different designs or the different components, I should say, um, but there's a lot of white space here left over on your sheet uh, where you can add more components later. Now, this took me about five minutes and this took me about 45 minutes. So what this is, is that same design, okay? But I've made two, um, two sets of the trees. So each of the components to make the trees, I've put two sets of them on the same sheet of material. And I really took my time to try and rotated parts and, and really fit things in quite densely. So we're really utilizing the material as much as possible, okay? And then on my second sheet of material, you can see I've broken out the pins and the bases into um, its own sheet. And I can fit 14 pins and 14 bases on this one sheet and two of the trees on this sheet. So that basically means for every one sheet of the pins and bases, I need to cut seven of the tree design. Okay, and that just makes things a lot easier. You can see there's a lot less white space in our design, okay? But as I said, this took me 45 minutes and there are different tools that you can use to try and accomplish this, but in a much shorter amount of time. Now, will these tools totally uh, negate the need for you to learn how to do this yourself? No, definitely not. Um, there's always a, you know, there's always a sliding scale in terms of how long you want, um, a design to compute for. This is very intensive, um, on your computer's resources. So it's graphics card and it's processor have to be quite high end, um, in order to do this very quickly. Uh, fortunately I have a very good computer so I can do this quickly, but, um, for most people, this would take quite a while. So, um, to do something as, as intense as this, right? But if we were doing a simple design, um, and we just wanted to utilize the material as much as possible, uh, with a short amount of time, we can also do that with these tools. Um, but definitely there is a time and a place where you need to know how to do this yourself. All right. So let's have a look at our first tool. Um, if I head over to my browser, you can see. I'm on deepnest.io, that's the website, and it is an open source nesting software. So it's its own um, design, uh, its own nesting software, completely standalone. Okay, and you can go through and you can read all the descriptions about how it can work. And there's a lot of really cool features, like you can have sections where you want to leave uh, blank and you want to nest everything around those sections. You can um, nest things by type or by color, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got it pulled up here. So basically the first step before you go ahead and do this is you import all your DXF files. So those are the files that you exported out of uh, Fusion 360, which I showed in the first step. Okay, and then you can press Start Nest and it'll basically try and work out the best way to nest um, the designs. If we have a look at the graph over here, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six different versions of this nesting that it's done. And they are 
basically color coded to show you sort of how optimized they are. So what we're after is something with a lot of pink in it, which means a lot of um, white space for um, for additional parts uh, to be to be placed. So as you can see here, all this section here would be uh, utilized for for more products. Okay, and you can scroll through them. You can have a look um, at the different designs. Okay, and you can see it's just using a different technique. Um, when uh, when placing all those parts there okay so this is to make one um, one tree all right so as i said this is quite intensive um, so the more parts or the more components to your design the longer this is going to take but typically this gives a, a very very average or you know a decent result okay it's not going to be the best quality uh, but definitely quite decent, but does require quite a bit of uh, resources on, from your computer. The pros are that this is very easy to use, this software, um, and you can export a DXF directly out of here, ready to go for cutting and engraving. So let's have a look at a more sophisticated um, piece of software. Okay, it definitely has its learning curve and it's a bit trickier to use. Um, it's not as simple as this, but I think it does a bit better job. You can see there's quite a bit of white space here and here um, where we could really optimize this, but um, you know, it's definitely better than that first example that I showed you where you would just drop the parts on the page and, and press go, right? So this is definitely better, but it's not the best. And if we head over to Corel, we can come back to our first design. Okay, here are all the different components. And now I want to try and use a plugin called eCut. I'll have a link in the description below and I'll show you how it works um, for a file like this. Okay, so we have all of our different um, components on the page. I want to make a box and select all of the components. And then I can go to tools, scripts, and then run script. Can you see that option there? We're in tools, scripts, run script. Okay. And if you haven't installed this, um, this plugin, it won't be available for you to choose. You need to actually install it. You have to go down into the description below and download it and install it. But once you've done that, um, we can come to this option here. So we have the macros in option and we want to choose E cut. Okay. Once we click that, there'll be a whole bunch of different options that you can look at. Okay. But the one that we want is called nesting. So click on that and press run. Once you do that, it'll start loading up the, the page. And this is what we are given. So here, if we look at the different options, you can see our sheet size. I have it ticked as use active page size, and I just use the page size in Corel Draw um, as, uh, and match that to my material size. But if you don't want to do that, you could choose um, the width and height here. Then uh, basically I just leave everything else standard. Uh, but I change the minimum distance. So the minimum distance is in millimeters um, and it's how, how much distance we want to keep from each of the components. So if you had a lot of squares, for example, or hexagons or something that can share a common line, right? Uh, you can set that to zero and they will be put up against each other and um, you can common line cut these. So I leave it at one millimeter for this kind of design. The approximation, I change it to high. So normally it's set to auto, but I changed it to high. Um, and that basically just really takes into account all the different um, complexities of the design, the shape of the arms and everything else. Um, if you choose middle or draft, it'll kind of create a box around it and sort of estimate the size of and shape of the design, but I want to really take into account everything. So I'm going to click high. Um, the angle, I'm going to choose 180 degrees. 
so you can rotate my part anywhere between 0 and 180 degrees um, to make it fit a bit better okay um, origin point you can leave that as bottom right or or bottom left it doesn't really matter um, and then fit shapes I use bottom best okay so once I've set that up I can press the apply button and now it'll go ahead and it'll try and fit this uh, material as best as it can and this is the score that we're looking for here all right so this is our waste um, our waste material and this is our usage so I want to get this waste material down as low as possible so um, in this case I can see that it's really trying to space things out a lot I don't like the way that it's um, it's done that you can also see that the time that it took to do this was very very quick right so um, what I'll do is maybe I'll choose a, a smaller minimum distance maybe 0 0.5 and then I can press apply again and it's going to recalculate that and now we've got a better wastage uh, percentage so this time it was 69% uh, the previous one was 77 because basically all this material is is wasted material so it's done a better job the second time uh, we can keep playing around with all these different um, uh, parameters to try and get a, a better result uh, you can also hit apply again and it'll try and recalculate it if it can find a better way to do it um, or you just have to keep playing with the parameters but let's say we are happy with this we can press ok and now you can see it's created the design down here and we can um, we can go ahead and cut that another really cool benefit of the e-cut system is let's just pop that up on the screen again is that we can manually help the uh, the algorithm so in the other design software that I showed you before it's totally automatic there's no sort of um, uh, yeah I guess manual process in it but let's say I really think that the best way to, to do this is to have this big piece in the bottom left first so I can manually grab that piece and drop it in the bottom left I can grab this star and I can put it you know sort of wherever I think will fit best um, and then maybe I'll grab one more and I'll, I'll nest it just like that okay and then what I can do is I can go down and press apply again and now using these um, I guess parameters or these um, manual intervention um, process it will then try and nest everything around this and sometimes it gives you a, a better result okay in this case it's it's not good and it's not bad um, I think this number is artificially high because of um, uh, because of the way that it sort of put these spaces in there uh, but you can see that's that nested it a lot a lot nicer so let's hit OK um, it's done a pretty good job and then I can come in here manually grab each of these different components and just place them sort of where I think it would work the best okay so it's a tool that's just going to help you uh, be a bit more productive okay definitely can save you a bit more time and I think that's a lot more compact than uh, the first option which we saw right here okay so there's a lot of wasted space whereas this step is a little bit more denser and um, yeah can really help you speed up the process so hopefully that helped you um, I really hope that you learned something new today if you want to see any of these tools in a bit more detail please leave a comment below and I will um, endeavor to make a new video on these if there's any questions that you have regarding mass production um, or workflow optimization, I'm happy to follow up with uh, another video, but I need to know that, so please put it in the comments below. While you're there, please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.